So thank you very much for having me here. Um, I'm going to be speaking, I know this is the World Perspective series, and I'm going to be speaking about my country, Nigeria. However, I have actually titled what I want to say today, Intentionality Will Be Your Differentiator. That's what I want to talk about. And before I start then, I want to just share a personal experience. So, two years ago, I had a young lady whose name is Shemitris. She's African-American. And she came to Nigeria for the first time because I was having a women's conference. She had expressed interesting. Now, first of all, her mother was absolutely like, no, they're going to kill you. They're going to kidnap you. They're going to blow you up. And Shemitri said, well, mom, I don't know. I met Audrey and her family in Dallas. They kind of look pretty normal to me. I'm going. <laughs> and so she came. From the first day she came, she was in my house. We went to various places, went to the malls, went to the hotels. I mean, she spent two weeks. Somewhere about the sixth day or so, it struck me that she hadn't taken a single photograph. And I thought to myself, that's kind of strange. You know, when you go to, hey, guys, when you go to the next town, you want to take a picture, right? but she didn't. But my company, one of my companies had been doing a training program for some local women, an empowerment program. We had them learning various vocational skills so that they could become self-employed. And we were having the graduation ceremony. And so we had to drive, it's quite a distance, to a more remote, um, kind of like a village side of Lagos State. And then at some point we were passing what was I guess what looked like what she had been seen on television for once. And she brought out her camera and she made to take a picture. And I said to her, Shemitris, if you take any picture here, so first I'm going to take your camera and throw it out the window. <laughs> and two, tonight I'm taking you back to the airport and whatever it costs me, you will leave Nigeria tonight. Kind of extreme, right? But why did I do that? She cried. And they said, why would you do that? Why? And I said to her, girl, you've been with me for how many days? The guest bedroom in my house where you stay is bigger than your entire apartment back in Dallas. You've been chauffeur driven in my Jeeps. You've been to the mall. You've, you've been everywhere. Tell me what looks like what you see. You've been looking for the women carrying baskets on their heads. I promise you I'm looking for them as well. You've been looking for the children who are naked on top of dustbin piles. I don't see them every day as well, and I don't say they don't exist. But I'm asking you how it is that you've been in my country for over a week, and you haven't taken a single shot. And now you see something that validates what the media wants you to see. And your camera comes out. You insult me. And she kept quiet, cried some more, kept quiet, and then she says, Audrey, I am so sorry. Because I left her with one thing, I said, you are African American, there's Africa in you. Everything you do that continues to project this country as being just messed up is actually a reflection back on yourself. I challenge you to tell another story, Shemitris, and that is exactly what she started to do. She started to blog, she started to do video recording, she started to interview people. And at the end of the day, when she was leaving, she was crying. She was determined to come back. And irony upon ironies, guess what? She's back in Dallas dating a Nigerian. <laughs> Go figure. But here's the thing, do I really blame her? The answer is no. Why not? If I sample the room now and ask you, what do you know about Nigeria? I don't even need to ask, I can tell you. Corruption, right? Kidnappings, bombing, religious disputes, and all sorts of negativity. I would not insult your intelligence by trying to pretend today that those things do not exist. But here's the irony and the flip side. Trying to think of sending my children to school abroad, my heart was heavy. I was concerned, why? Because I see in the media school shootings, I see perfectly normal people you have conversations with, who then crawl into your homes and slice your throats. I see all sorts of weird things that never happen in my country. But I shift my perspective and realize that those things can never de define the entire country. And so that's the confidence with which I say, you guys go, you'll be just fine. Today I want to challenge each and every one of us to ask ourselves, what is it that we think we know about Africa? 
I want to challenge everybody here. The internet is there, but somehow we're not using it in the right way. Somehow we're using it to validate the negativity. Nigerians are amazing, resilient. We're all over the place. You can find us anywhere in the world. We're very friendly, very exuberant people. Sometimes loud, but hey, <laughs> that's real, okay? We have a very rich culture of food, of fashion. I think the biggest problem we have in Nigeria is that each Nigerian is a bundle of talents. And you know that values are gifts and talents. They are value neutral, right? So the same gifts and talents you can plug into something positive is the same thing you can plug into something negative. And then unfortunately for those who have chosen to plug into the negatives, we all know like they say that one bad apple spoils the entire bunch. So in a country that currently is about 180 million, I dare say that less than 10, maybe 20 million of the population are involved in all sorts of atrocities within and outside the country. And unfortunately, therefore, the rest of us are grouped in that space. But I promise you also that in terms of the quality of life that we live, it's not what you see in the media. The media sells sensationalism, the media sells negativity, because that's what people want to see. I believe that each of us feels better about ourselves because we can see people who are not as endowed or not as blessed or whatever it may be but the truth is that we are all just people and Nigerians are great people if you find those who a lot of expatriates we have huge expatriate communities all over the country and most of them would tell you that Nigeria is a second home to them the people are very welcoming very engaging whether it, in any area we're very talented and we manifested we're resilient the average Nigerian if you ask them how are you they say to you I day you know what I day means I day means I'm good. It means that I'm, I'm suffering, I'm going through many things, but guess what, I'm good. If you ask them how are things, they say to you, ego better. You know what ego better means? It's gonna get better. It might not be perfect, but it's gonna get better. Nigerians love life. We love life, and wherever we are, we try to make a difference. My challenge to you today is to make sure that you don't allow the negative difference to become your color of the nation, because it is not. Now, I had said something that I want to talk about, the fact that intentionality will be your differentiator. Because some of you here, the closest you will come to Nigeria, and this is the truth, it's going to be Kenneth, it's going to be Kamsi, it's going to be Somkene, and maybe their mom and myself. That is the truth. But there's some of you who will actually get to Africa, will actually get to Nigeria, if you open your minds to the possibilities. Okay, are we real about that? I'm the most Nigeria a lot of you would see. I'm the most Africa you would be that directly connected with. So this is really to me not just about that I came to talk about my country, is that I came to talk about intentionality. Because you're young people, your minds are still very, very fresh. And one thing I know is that as they say, the world is a global, is, is a global village, right? Globalization is a reality. But here's a bigger reality, guys, that the thinkings, the perspectives, the attitudes and approaches based on which either or any of you is going to be a success, they're also constantly changing. It's not the same factors that played out in my time playing out in yours. And so what are going to be the difference makers? In my view, those of you who are going to be exceptional in your generation are those who are able to make a very distinct connection between this and this. It's going to be those of you that choose not to allow the world to frame your perspectives for you. It's going to be those of you that say to yourselves, there must be another side to this story and I'm open to it. There are a myriad of opportunities in Africa right now. There are two kinds of investment flowing into Africa, or I dare say supposedly flowing into Africa. So there's one is a group of people who have seen that yes, there are needy areas in the country. And so these present investment opportunities to add value and make a profit. But there are also those who sell all those stories because there's aid, financial aid, channeled towards those poor starving children who only drink dirty water who I don't see anywhere. And those kind of money is going to different pockets. So again, value neutral, people choose. But what I do know is that if you open your mind to relationships, to interactions, and refuse to let them be covered, colored by negativity, when you open your mind to positive perspectives, when you open your mind to realization that I can make a difference in any area of the world, guess what? Positivity comes your way, new investments and opportunities come your way. 
what is going to make you to be outstanding? Because I believe there are only two types of people in the world. At the end of the day, we have the Joneses, irrespective of race, of tribe, of religion. We have the Joneses and we have the differentiators. Which of you is going to stand up and decide to be a differentiator? You cannot be a differentiator if you allow the media to color your thinking. You need to be able to find out things for yourselves. You need to be able to challenge the status quo. You need to ask yourself, what do I believe in? What are the things that I think I think? And what are the things that I think I know? And sometimes you need to throw those things out of the window and start afresh. If you close your minds to Africa, if you close your minds to Africans, if you close your mind to any nation and any people, actually you just make your own circle of influence much smaller. And I refuse to think that with the benefit of an education at a wonderful institution like Pickering, we would deliberately allow ourselves to suboptimize the potentials we have for global impact. You need to take charge of what you think about, guys. That is what I came to say today, not so much to talk about Nigeria. However, I know I'm very proud of my country. I think it's an amazing country. I wouldn't have wanted to be from anywhere else. I love it. I love the people, I love the culture. But this is me and I'm one person. We have countless others who may say different. Sometimes Nigerians themselves are the ones telling these stories, right? So I don't blame anybody, but I do believe that as much as is possible, you who are the recipient of any kind of news, question it, challenge it for your own selves. Now I know that after I finish speaking, the very next thing that may happen is that somebody goes to the mall and has a contact with an encounter with some African American who turns out to be a Nigerian and it's a negative experience. I also know that the reality is that we may leave this space and the first thing you see on CNN, breaking news, 200 girls kidnapped, bombs. Is that the reality? Yes, it is. But I dare say that if we allow those single experiences again to color everything I might have said here today about the fact that this is indeed a beautiful country, then we've all failed ourselves. I want each of you to think of yourselves as a nation and ask yourselves how you feel each time your friends or your parents, you know, just sort of put you down because you've made one more mistake. How does it feel, guys? Does it feel good? Does it feel good? If it doesn't feel good and you don't want to be defined by the fact that I made a mistake, if you don't want to be defined by the fact that I have a brother in jail and so my family is now, hey, if your brother is in jail, does that change who you are? No. If we appreciate this, then can we also escalate this to a national level and dare say that, be it Nigeria, be it whatever country or continent, irrespective of what the few might be doing, essentially, it's a nation that is filled with beautiful people trying to do beautiful things. Like Julia told you, my husband and myself, last year we won the Entrepreneur of the Year West Africa Award. It's an award by Ernst & Young, which is a global brand. They operate in about 160 countries of the world. We started our company in 1994, the first one, with absolutely nothing but a commitment to make a difference in Nigeria, to tell a different story, to be part of the infrastructural build-up and to do business in an ethical way based on best practices. That award last year was a validation of the fact that we've been doing the right things. But you're not going to see me on CNN. And I can promise you that my business is pretty big, but there are a lot of smaller businesses who are doing remarkable things. That is the real Nigeria. So even if you go out of here today and there's some negative media, please, can I encourage you to think about me? Or perhaps you really don't know me. So can I ask you, Kenneth, can you stand? Can I ask you to think about him? Because guess what, guys? This is brand Nigeria. Kenneth learned English back home. Some people have asked him here, oh, your English is so good. Of course it's good. That's our first language. What did you think we speak, Nigeria? <laughs> we speak English. Kenneth is a brilliant, hey, don't let your head get that big, okay? Just, but he's brilliant. Hey, I'm so proud of him. And Kenneth has never schooled abroad until he came here. So that means we're getting something right back home, right? We're certainly not schooling on top of trees, are we? And I'm not saying it's perfect. I maintain it is not perfect. But you need to be able to look past, if Nigeria is what I see, then how come Kenneth is here? How come Kamsi? How come Somkene? Come on. 
They're human beings like you, they're among you. And these are your brand ambassadors. I challenge you today to allow yourselves, color your thinking about Africa, about Nigeria, based on the ones that you know. Because I can promise you that if we back home colored the entire world based on the experiences we have, then the world will really be in trouble. Please be intentional in your thoughts, in your perspectives. Dare to be different. You owe nobody any apologies. Dare to stand and say, no, you know what? I believe in this and you can't take it from me, irrespective of what is being sold out there. That's my challenge today. And for everybody here who is effectively an ambassador of your families, of your nations, of your whatever, because we break it up into so many different boxes, don't we? Whatever it is, can you just please realize that when you stand, you're standing and representing so many more people than yourselves. And if you recognize that, then dare to make the right difference. That's just all I wanted to say today. Thank you very much.